So we're gonna start by sitting on our blanket. Take your blanket and fold it up and put it under your bottom and you can face the side of your mat. Taking your feet into bound angle pose. So today's practice is about hip mobility. It'll be a hatha practice and a lot of flexibility postures and stretching will be involved as well. So we're gonna take, now some of us, this might be a lot for our hips first thing. So we can take two blocks and you can put them under your thighs and that'll help. You might even turn them on medium octane if you'd like, because we're gonna to try to stay stable here throughout our pranayama, which is a lot, and also our mantra practice today. So feel free to prop yourself. All right, I'm gonna take my index finger to my thumb and lift as tall as I can through the spine. So we're strengthening our core here, right? Our knees aren't holding us up really. It's really our torso. Roll the shoulders back, chin in towards the throat. Take three breaths to come into your center space, meaning not there out on the edges. The edges are whatever happened before the practice, whatever might happen after the practice. Just let that go and be fully here. Come into your space. And we'll bring our hands towards our heart center. Peace mantra this morning. If you know it, chant it along with me. Om Sahina Bhavatu. Sai na obuna tu Savir young he Te jasvina vadita mastu Ma vid vishava he Om shanti 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 together. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And release your hands. When you're ready, open your eyes. There's no hurry. Index finger to thumb, Yana Mudra. Next, our individual self to our higher self today. Also helps us in the seeking for knowledge and concentration. So at any time you start to feel this pose in your back, it's time to change your position. So you're welcome to bring your feet under your knees, crossing your ankles, or even just bring one heel in front of the other. If you can, stay here, but if you feel it in your back, then it's time to get out, okay? So you wanna roll forward, tilt your pelvis slightly forward. You wanna be on your sit bones and not on your tailbone. So give that a try, or feel free to cross your legs at any time. And you can even cross your legs with the blocks under them. Feels nice too. All right, we're gonna need to try Anuloma Viloma and Pratiloma Viloma to find some balance today. So left hand stays in Yana Mudra, right hand fist comes up for Vishnu Mudra, open the thumb and the last two fingers. So we're going to be breathing in and out through one side and then, and then exhaling through both nostrils. So the first one is called Analoma Viloma. We breathe in through both nostrils and we breathe out through the right. Then we stop, we breathe in through both nostrils and we breathe out to the left. We'll try that for five rounds. Then we're going to change to Pratiloma Vilova, where we will inhale on the left and we'll exhale through both. Inhale right, exhale both. And this is a classic Hatha Yoga Pranayama practice to find balance. So I'll lead you through them because it can be a little confusing at first, but I know you'll get the hang of it. So we're going to breathe in through both nostrils first. Have your hands ready. 
Close off the left side, breathe out through the right. I'm counting to five. Inhale both nostrils. Exhale left. That's one round. Inhale both nostrils. Exhale right. Feel free to close your eyes if you'd like. Inhale both. Exhale left. With the intention of balance. Inhale both. Exhale right. Inhale both. Exhale left. Pull your belly button back to the spine. Two more rounds. Inhale both. Exhale right. Release your hands. Inhale both nostrils. Exhale left. Inhale both. Last round. Exhale right. Inhale both. Exhale left. Now we're going to try Pratiloma Viloma. So I'll remind you, we're going to inhale on the left, exhale both, inhale right, exhale both. You ready to give it a try? Close off the right nostril with your thumb, inhale left. One, two, three, four, five, exhale both nostrils. Not ujjayi, regular exhale, natural exhale. Four, five. Okay. Inhale just on the right. Closing off the left nostril. And exhale both. Good work. Inhale left. Exhale both. Inhale right. Exhale both. Now I'll lead you in one more round, then you'll do try two on your own. Inhale left. Exhale both. Inhale right. Exhale both. Now try two on your own, left, right. Don't forget you exhale through both nostrils before you go to the right. Count to five if you can. Maybe you can even make it slower. Whenever you're finished, there's no hurry. Please take your time, complete the full cycle. Sit up as tall as you can, relaxing both arms on the knees. Really squeezing in the belly to engage your core and protect your spine. Hands down when you're finished. And then we'll release our blocks. Take them to the sides. 
and we're going to need this. Take your feet very wide, hands are intended fingertips. Drop both knees to the left. Look left. Inhale, take the knees up. Drop both knees to the right. Lifting your left hip, your left hip's going to come off the floor. Down, exhale. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, keep moving. Inhale, feels nice after sitting in that pose. Exhale, inhale. Exhale. Keep moving at your own pace. It's not uncommon to rock forward a little bit or need to readjust your feet. I was practicing this this morning as I love it, but I realized how often I rolled off my blanket. So it's not uncommon. And one more time on each side, really gives a nice stretch to the glutes, to the hips. Take your time. Great. All right, and then we're going to take the left leg in front of us. Switch back just a little bit. Keep the blanket under your bottom for Janu Shirsasana. Bring the right heel in. You might want to have one block handy. Open the right knee, right hip opens. So you're welcome to prop your knee if you need to. If not, you can have your knee coming towards the floor. Now also, sometimes we feel a little tight in the left leg here, the hamstring. So go ahead and put another block under your left leg if needed. Got it? Looks good. So your heel tries to come as close to the groin as possible. That's classic hatha. Um, if it's not working for your knee, you can take your right foot a little further forward. That looks nice and close there, Fred. Good. Okay. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Try to square your hips and your shoulders to the front of your mat or to the front uh, where we're looking together. And then exhale, walk your hands forward slowly. Pull your chin towards your throat. Good morning, hamstrings. Inhale, come back, swing your arms back, lift your heart, lift all the way up. Lovely. And then exhale. So we're going to flow like this five times and then we'll stay. Inhale, reach your arms back and up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale. Really open your arms back and up. Exhale, good. Chin comes towards your throat as you forward fold. Try two more on your own. One more. Nice, really stretch the spine and then stay. As you come forward, you might stay here. Try to get a, as long of a back as possible. You might be here, you might be here. Pull your chin towards your throat. Let the crown of the head come towards the big toe. That's it. Count your inhale and exhale. Try to make them equal. Keep your left leg very active, toes pointing to the sky. Good. And then inhale, lift your head. Exhale here. And slowly walk your hands back. Ah, lift the knee and then stretch the leg. Maybe you want to bend it a little bit. My knee gets a little grumpy in that one sometimes. Bend the left knee, get it nice and close. See how that feels, keeping the right foot very active. Open the left hip. This is Janu Sirsasana. Janu is your knee, Sirsa is your head. So it's head to knee pose. Move the muscles from the sits bones and tilt yourself slightly forward. Inhale, reach your arms back and up. Like you're taking a little back bend, reach your heart to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, pull your chin towards your throat. Inhale, remember if your hamstrings are screaming, you can put something under your right knee or bend your knee. Exhale, 
Square your hips and your shoulders forward. Three more. Start to engage Ujjayi breath now. If you haven't already, slight constriction in the throat, inhaling and exhaling. Good, reach up really nice. And we'll stay five breaths. I'll count on you to count your breaths. Walk your hands as far forward as possible with a nice straight spine. Maybe that means you stay up a little higher so your spine can stay straighter. Make sure your left hip is pulling slightly forward, your right hip is pulling slightly back. Really active right leg. The stronger your right leg is, the more stability you'll find in the pelvis here. And then you can really focus on your hip opening. Whenever you're finished with your fifth breath, you'll inhale and rise slowly, but take your time. I know some of you have a really nice long breath. Enjoy that. Embrace it. Nice strength through the core, Fred. Good job coming up. Nice. That's it. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Let's come back to that wonderful position. Bring your left knee up and left leg forward. We're going to come back to that rocking, that parabrisas or windshield wiper with wide legs. It'll be our kind of relief pose. Bring your hands behind you. I like to use tented fingertips. Take your feet really wide and drop to the left, exhale, good. Inhale, when you get all the way to the left, exhale to the center, inhale to the right, exhale, center. Now, we're going to try adding our arms. So take your arms out, you're gonna feel some core strength going on here. Exhale here, Inhale, left. Keep your arms up. Exhale, center. Inhale to the right. This is one I really rocked forward on. Exhale, center. Inhale, left. Exhale, center. Inhale, right. And exhale, center once again. If you're like me and you rocked a little bit, you can scoot yourself back now. And we're gonna try a little different pose. So we're gonna take the right leg behind us. Now, sometimes I've heard from some of you that um, this is a lot on the hips. So if this feels like too much on the hips, because we're going to be going to the side and then we'll go forward. If that feels like too much on the hips, here's where you go. You take the right foot forward instead, okay? And you can prop, but not as not like Janusirsasana. Don't bring the heel all the way in. Keep it open a little bit more. You could even prop that knee. Otherwise, we're going for opening the QL, which holds the hip, hips tight, the, the quadratus lumborum, the muscle between the lower rib and the top of your pelvis. So we're gonna take our left arm long and exhale, reach all the way over. This is an exhale when you go down, gaze is forward. Inhale when you come up. Good, five times. Exhale as you go forward, so you're facing the side. Inhale, go slow, nice, exhale, you're fine Michael like that, yep, inhale, good, two more, yeah, one more, Now let's stay. 
Exhale, we'll stay five breaths. You can take your right hand to your shoulder and just gently guide it back. You can even take your hand to your ribs and gently open them. If you feel open enough, you can keep your arm all the way over the ear. Four more breaths. Keep pressing the right cis bone down to the floor. Right knee is trying to come towards the floor. Good, one more breath. Inhale, rise. Nice. And then go forward, 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 forward. Yes. Now you're going into the center between your legs. You should be feeling this on the inner left leg, right through the hips. Take three more ujjayi breaths. Stick with the breaths. Don't let your mind go elsewhere. Bring your mind back from the edges into the center. Inhale, lift the head. Walk the hands back. Oh, very, very carefully lean back and lift your right knee and stretch it out in front of you like Dandasana. Oh, anybody feeling better in the hips already? I am. All right. Right leg opens and the left leg comes behind if possible. Now this hip might be different than the other. If you need to bring your other foot in front, it could be that this side feels happy to go behind. So you be the judge of that. And this one might be like, no, not working for me. So I need to bring it in the front. That's fine too. Okay, so you're facing the side, your hips are open. We're going to exhale, reach all the way over to the right. Keep your gaze centered. Should be feeling that in the low back on the left. Inhale, reach up and back. Nice and slow, good. Exhale. Inhale. Keep your right leg active, toes pointing to the sky. Exhale. Inhale. Two more before we stay. Exhale. Inhale, close your eyes if you'd like. One more. Exhale. Inhale. Nice, let's stay to the right. Exhale, reach and stay. Inhale. Exhale, one. Feel free to take your left hand to your left shoulder and gently guide it back or the ribs. Second breath. Third breath. Left sits bone pressing down toward the floor, may not be touching it. Okay. Last big breath here. Inhale, rise up using your side abdominal strength. Now twist your torso to be in the center between your right and left legs and try to make them as open as possible. Here we go for our forward fold. I'm gonna tilt my pelvis slightly forward, put the blanket right under the bottom and reach forward. Oh, hello adductors. That's the inner legs <laughs> getting a really delicious stretch here. Toes to the sky, lift your heart. Maybe you can go a little further and allow your heart to melt down, chin towards the throat. Keep your right leg squeezing open. Toes pointing to the sky, left leg is active. The more stable the pelvis is, the better hip opening you'll receive.
Okay, one more big breath. Inhale, lift your head slowly, slowly, slowly come back. Bring your hands behind you, lift the left knee, shake it out. It's a big one for the knees. All right, we're gonna bring ourselves to standing. So we're going to cross to the legs and we're gonna stand facing the side of our mat today. So bring your knees down, step one foot forward and then the other. Finding a hip width apart distance for your feet. Padasana, spread the toes with the arches of the feet, activating the coming to your standing pose. All the way up, there you go, Fred. Finding some energy through the inner legs up into the pelvic floor. Open the palms, roll the shoulders back. Chin towards the throat. Gazing along the line of the nose, get as tall as you can, pull in the ribs, really squeeze, the, let, allow your muscles to squeeze your bones. In, 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 in and up. Even around the legs, think about the muscles squeezing the bones. And then lifting the head, separating your feet wider, turning the right toes open for Virabhadrasana 2. Let's let it be a really long Virabhadrasana 2. So I'm going to challenge you here to get as long as you can. We're only going to stay in it for five breaths, but don't let your knee go over the ankle. Hips as much to the side as you can without allowing your right knee to turn in. There you go. That's it. Extend the arms out. Uh-huh. Now look over your right middle finger. Pull in the belly, you want pubic bone to navel. Don't lean forward, make sure your shoulders are right over your hip. Watch that the back arm is as high as the front arm. Go looking over your right middle finger, try to hold it. So how do we hold it? We press the balls of the feet in. The toes, the heels, lift the arches, active legs, pelvic floor is active, mula bandha is engaged. Two more breaths. Shoulders open, one more breath. Now bring your right arm to your thigh, take the left arm up and over. Can you stay three breaths? I know we're getting tired, look up. Good, one more breath. And straighten the right leg, thank goodness coming out of that pose. Take your right foot parallel to the edge of the mat. And I realize this is a little longer warrior two than we often take. And we're doing that just to get the hips open a little bit more. So left toes are turned open, right foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. Heel is in alignment with the arch of the back foot. Bend your left knee. See if you can almost get the thigh parallel to the floor. That's a very long distance, right? to have your feet apart, to be able to bring the thigh parallel to the floor. Now, engaging Mula Bandha, pressing the ball of the foot in, heel in, turn your head left, open your chest, keep your arms at equal height. If you're not sure if your arms are at equal height, you can gaze forward to look. Keep opening the left knee. Very nice, one more breath. And bring the left arm down, right arm reaches up and all the way over the ear. Let's see if you can turn your gaze up. Open your right hip, open your ribs, open your shoulder, just three breaths. Keep your legs very active. I realize it's a very long distance between your front foot and your back foot. Good. Now straighten the left leg. So we just stayed three breaths. Straighten the left leg. Oh, bring the feet together carefully. Ah, and we have our standing balance. And this balance will help us stretch out our hips. So sometimes we can get a little um, 
out of balance in this posture. It is a little trickier one. So if you need, you can put your bottom against a wall or put even a chair in front of you. I'll show you first. We're going to bend the right knee and open it and then place the right ankle just above the left knee, hands of the heart. And then we're gonna be coming down to feel a good stretch, okay? So here's where a chair in front would help or even your bottom touching the wall if you need. We're going to try to stay five breaths on each side. You ready to give it a try? So bend the right knee, open the hip, and bring the right ankle above the left knee, not on the knee. Now bend your left knee, and you're gonna start feeling a really delicious stretch. I say delicious, might be a little, a little much. Feel that stretch on the right hip, and try to bring your elbows to touch your inner right thigh and your heel. Ooh. If this is not giving you a stretch and you feel well balanced, you could always bring your fingers down to the floor and that will definitely give you a stretch in your hip. <laughs> it's a big one. Gazing towards the floor. Try to lift your right knee just a little bit. Good, one more breath. And gently come up and shake out the left ankle. I hope that felt like a really nice stretch on your hip. And that's a great one to try over time and try to bring yourself a little lower to the floor, even the fingertips to the floor. You feel a little more intense stretch on the hip. All right, left foot forward, open the hip, lift the leg and the ankle's gonna come right above the right knee. Stop there as you catch your balance, spread your toes, ball of the right foot is actively pressing into the floor. Slowly bend your right knee. Take your time, place your hands or elbows, I should say. Gazing to the floor, try to gaze in one place. Five Ujjayi breaths, four more. There you go. That's it. Nice. Two more breaths. One more breath. And gently make your way out. That's a hard one. <laughs> I snuck that one in there on you today. Let's stretch out those hips a little bit more. So do go ahead and make your way into downward facing dog. Maybe you want to take a nice stretch first and forward fold. So now you're going to face one edge of your mat and bring your feet back to downward facing dog. This is going to be our upside down pose for the day or inversion. Lift the right leg up to the sky, bend the knee, and open your right hip, looking up under the right arm. You can turn your right ankle. I like this posture because it takes the weight off the ankle. You can turn the ankle from your standing pose, give it some rejuvenation. You're also opening your hips. The higher you lift your right knee, the more of a stretch you'll get through the back of the left leg. Now, if you're getting tired, you can always lower the left knee to the floor and keep lifting through the right leg. All right, one more breath. This is called Adho Vrishika, or a downward scorpion pose. Right leg down. All right, lift the left leg high to the sky, bend the knee and open your left hip. So your left knee is pointing straight up to the sky and you're gonna feel the stretch on the inner hip, so your hip flexors, back of the right leg. Try not to allow your right heel to swivel to right or left. Lift the knee as high as you can. Left knee goes up, up, up to the sky. Two more breaths, look under your left arm, looks good.
one more breath. It's also a lovely back bend. And release the foot. Now having your blanket nearby in case you need it or a block, we're gonna step the right foot forward for pigeon. Put right foot behind left hand, right knee behind right hand. And then start to slowly come back. Now I like to use a blanket sometimes under the thigh and the knee. It's very, very useful to prop them both, just sitting the thigh on the blanket. We want to tilt, take both hips forward. You can also use a block if you'd like under your right hip. Both hips want to come forward in this posture. And so if you're open like this, I highly recommend you put a block under your hip and then you'll be able to turn your hips forward more. Give that a try. Yeah. Now check for me too, if you're already there and waiting, then make one straight line between your knee and your hip, and it should be parallel to the edge of the mat. I don't, it doesn't matter where this heel goes, if it's in or forward, but we do want to be on the front side of the left leg, and then you'll feel the most opening. Any questions? Got it? Good, all right. Inhale, square your hips and square your shoulders forward. Exhale, so walk halfway forward and pull your chin towards your throat. Now you're feeling your right hip. Flex your right foot. Option to stay here or go further. Walk your hands further. Four more breaths. Two more breaths. One more breath. Inhale, lift your head, walk your hands back. And try to make yourself very, very tall. Your torso is very long and tall. If you need to lift up because you feel it in the low back, lift up and off the floor. Good. And release by leaning to your right. Very simply, we're going to take the left leg in front and the right leg behind. We want that knee and hip to be parallel to the edge of the mat. One straight line. That keeps your knee in a natural hinge joint, which will keep your knee safe. You might be noticing now that you have one side that feels a lot more open than the other. <laughs> or is it just me? I tend to feel one side more than the other for sure, especially in this posture. So the right hip is rolling forward. If you're rolling into your left hip, then you are a candidate for being up on a block or using that delicious blanket under your thigh and hip. A great way to get just a little bit of a lift here. All right, exhale, chin to the throat, halfway forward. Make your spine as long as you can, long straight back, shoulders down your back. Inhale, lift your head a little bit, lift your heart a little bit, and exhale, walk your hands further if possible, otherwise staying there for five more breaths. Inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. Inhale. Exhale, three. 
Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Slowly inhale, lift your head and walk your hands back and get very, very tall. You can even place one block on either side if you'd like for support. Get as tall as you can through the torso. Turning your right hip forward, left hip back, squeeze your left leg. Left glute is very active, right glute is a little softer. Well done, and release the pose. So when we release the pose, we're gonna lay on our backs. Bring your legs, your right leg around, and we're gonna lay on our back, putting the blanket to the side. Take a moment to just feel the body and feel the breath. Notice your hips, how they feel differently, your legs. One more breath. And then opening the eyes, we're going to lift the legs and cross your right leg is closer to your chest, your right leg in front of your left leg. Your right knee is in front of your left knee. And then bend the knees so that your feet come down. Yeah, good. But your knees stay a bit crossed. So reach for your feet. It could be the bottom or the top, this doesn't matter. And pull your feet towards you as your knees come towards you. Ah. Now, we're gonna push a little bit, push your feet into your hands and allow your knees to come towards your chest. So knees pull in and feet press towards hands. I hope you're feeling this on your right hip. Nice stretch. Feet pressing toward the hands, pressing forward and knees squeezing in. So there's a push-pull going on with the feet and the hands. Feet pushing toward hands and pushing towards feet. Staying just a little longer here. This is an upside down Gomukhasana, cow face pose. Which is a lot nicer on the knees. And release. Stretch your legs out to the sides and change the position. So now your left knee will be closer to your chest than your right. Uh -huh. Let your feet dangle a little. Ah, it feels good. <laughs> and then reach for your feet. Maybe you can't reach the feet, no problem. Grab onto your shins, that's okay too. And pull in. So you're pulling the feet towards your shoulders. And now we're gonna to start to turn on the action of a muscle sensor that will help you release your, your hips, the Golgi tendon organ sensor. So as you push your feet into your hands, allow your hands to push your feet. At the same time, squeezing your knees towards your chest. So there's a lot of energy between your hands and your feet. I'm staying a total of eight breaths like the other side. That was breath two. Keep the action going, feet, hands, hands, feet. Your feet are trying to break free and your hands are not letting that happen.
One more big breath here. The outer edge of your foot pressing against the hand, hand pressing against the outer edge of the foot. Great. And then drop your heels towards your bottom and relax your legs a little in a bicycle. Ah, feels good. And we're going to try to take a hold of our big toes now. I can see it feels really good. Take a hold of your big toes with your peace sign fingers. Bend your knees if you need and open the legs to the sides. Give yourself a nice stretch. It's like happy baby with open legs, like a V shape. Like Upa Vista Konasana, which we're going to try to roll up and into. So you're going to roll back and then up. And up, try to make it up. You can let go of your toes if you want to make it up and then release your feet down and your feet are in a wide V. Move your muscles from your sits bones, tilt your pelvis forward. You're also welcome to use your blanket for this last forward fold together today. Good. Inhale, strong legs. Exhale, walk yourself halfway forward. Pull your chin towards your throat. Squeeze your legs. One more breath here, just two. Take a big inhale with me and see if you can go further. Maybe you can reach for your toes. Eight breaths. We're on breath three. Here, 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 wherever you can go. Tailbone is sticking out behind you. Slow, peaceful breaths. One more breath. Bring your hands to the floor and gently take yourself up one last time. Shavasana. So find your favorite position, prop yourself as you'd like. Maybe you'd like a blanket under your head and the two blocks under your knees. That feels so nice on the back. I like to place them under the knees like this and a blanket under my head. Stretch your tailbone towards your heels. Lift your upper back and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Let the arms come out to the sides. Lift the head a little bit and bring your chin towards your throat. Allow your feet to relax, rolling your feet out to the edges. Body supported, peaceful, and well. We're going to bring the energy down from the top of the head today after a little breathing practice. So we're going to breathe in through both nostrils. And without using your hands, breathe out through the left. Breathe in both nostrils. No hands on your nose. Breathe out right nostril. Breathe in. Both nostrils. Breathe out left. Breathe in both. Breathe out right.
Breathe in both. Breathe out left. Breathe in both. Breathe out right. Now breathe in both nostrils. And a big exhale out the mouth. And let go of the breath. Become the watcher of your subtle energy coming down from the top of the head. See at the top of the head the color violet. Violet Sahasrara Chakra. When this chakra is in balance, we're open to divinity to miracle and to possibility. We're open to the entire universe. We're at one with all. Next, please bring your awareness to the center of the eyebrows. See here an indigo color. Right at the center. Ajna chakra. When our Ajna chakra is in balance, we feel at one with our inner wisdom, our intuition. We trust ourselves. We can see things on a spiritual level, not having to resort to seeing things only with our eyes. We know. Next, bring your awareness to the throat center. Mm, throat center, light blue. Vishuddha chakra, blue like the sky. Balance here looks like a balance between being able to listen well and speak what's on your mind clearly. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Clear expression, positivity. Clear and to the point. Pure, positive communication, positive expression, without fear or judgment or doubt. Next, bring your awareness to the heart center, your spiritual heart center. See a green color along the line of the spine at the level of your physical heart. Right along the line of the spine. When the Anahata Chakra is in balance, you find it easy to love, to feel unity, community, 
compassion, empathy, joy, love, generosity, and forgiveness. Feel this energy reaching out into the arms and the hands. Next, bring your awareness to your solar plexus between the navel and the heart where the ribs come together. And see here a beautiful color yellow Mani Pura Chakra. Yellow like the sun, bright and strong. This is your willpower, not your willfulness. This is the power of love, not the love of power. Our ego is here, our personality springs from here. The way we take care of ourselves and others comes from here. Of course, these chakras are interdependent. We take care of ourselves with loving kindness because of the heart above it. Our willpower may ebb and flow because of the chakra below it our water chakra, this is our fire chakra, Manipura, our digestion, depends on how strong this chakra feels, how high is our fire, our Agni. Let's bring your awareness down to the navel center, just below the navel, Swadhisthana Chakra. Orange color, the element represented is water. Feel the fluidity of the organs nearby, bladder, uterus. This chakra, when it is balanced, brings us into balance between play and work, between being and doing, between being creative and getting things done. It's a transition chakra. Next, bring your awareness down into the base of the spine, red color. From orange and swadhisthana down into red. This is our earth, our grounding, red color. Beautiful Muladhara Chakra. Feel our livelihood springing from here. Our roots deep. Feeling grounded. Feel your foundation here. The hips surround our foundation. May you have mobility in them today. May you be able to move this body. We've been given this time around in a fluid way. Slowly move toes and fingers, wrists and ankles, 
Turn your toes in a little, feeling the nice stretch through the quadriceps and the hips. And then bend your knees in towards your chest and hold on to the shins, press down, rock side to side. That's it. And then roll on to your right side and gently bring yourself up to a seat. Take your time to come up. You might want to sit on a block or a blanket. Bring our hands to the heart center, grace and reverence for mobility in our hips today. Or this evening, if you're joining me in the evening, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. It's been an honor leading your practice. Om Shanti.